Louisville, Kentucky. This basketball cathedral seats almost 19,000. Tonight, every seat is filled, and every basketball fan in Kentucky is here, at least in spirit. Two schools, one state. So much success. Great players. Final fours and national championships. Great coaches as well. One for 30 years, others succeeding as they pass through. It's about more than bragging rights, this battle of the bluegrass. It's about tradition and pride in a state that lives for its basketball. Tonight, no one in the state of Kentucky is on the fence. It's time to choose up sides, blue or red, Kentucky or Louisville. The only thing about this game we can't quite figure out is the records of the two teams. Nobody thought UK would be 5-5, five and five, or the Cardinals struggling at 4-8. and eight. That all goes out the window tonight as they play for the 32nd time. I'm Bob Carpenter. Welcome to Louisville. Great place to watch a game. Best place to watch this game. Kentucky shot 48% or better three times in the 90s. All three of those times, they went to the Final Four. This series was interrupted for 62 years, so my buddy never got to play against Louisville. Larry Conley, you weren't playing the Cardinals back then. No, Bob, I wasn't, but I had a chance to play a few other good ones in this building. Hey, now, what about this Kentucky shooting? They've got five losses by just 14 points total, but they're shooting the basketball so much better lately. Bob, 11 days ago, they came in here and beat a pretty good Indiana team, and they shot 69% in the second half. I think they've kind of turned the corner. This is a team that's going to get better and better just prior to going into conference play. And the other factor, the clubs they have played so far, outstanding schedule, except maybe for that home opener against Penn State. Well, those 14 points that they've lost in those five games has been a very, very tough year for them. But as I said, I think they've turned the corner. Talking of tough, Denny Crum, 30 years at the helm of the Cardinals. The 4-8 start, the worst ever for one of his ball clubs. They're very young. We asked him about coaching all these kids. I think they've gotten a little frustrated. They didn't really understand the, what it's like playing at this level. And, uh, but I think uh, as time goes on, they'll, they'll learn. And uh, uh, you know we'll get better and better. Right now, we're not real, playing real well. But a rivalry like this can sometimes uh, bring out the best in guys. Yeah, this is the kind of game that can take a young club and carry them for a couple of weeks. Bobby can, and they are very frustrated. What Denny Crum is seeking is someone to lead this basketball team. And I think each, each player is doing a little something extra to try to provide that leadership. They haven't found it yet. Well, Marcus Maven has to be their guy. We already know who one of the guys is for Kentucky. It's Keith Bogans, their sophomore guard. All SEC last year. He can light it up. It's the Cats, it's the Cards, it's next. Feel the power. Here's the here. Just one band, though. Didn't have room for the UK guys, but that's okay. Toughest ticket in this part of the country tonight. A frigid night outside in Louisville, and we know it'll be hot in here. Kentucky under Tubby Smith. Tayshawn Prince had a big game here last year when he had 20. That was just before he became an all-SEC player. And Louisville is very concerned about matching up with him tonight. They might have to do it with freshman Ellis Miles. Meanwhile, in the backcourt, they need leadership from Reese Gaines. Only four assists per game, Larry. 43 assists, 36 turnovers on the year. And Louisville not passing the ball around real well this time. No, and, and Denny Crump today in the shooter round was complaining about and struggling with their shooting and their shot selection and their passing. Cardinals get the tip. We're ready to go for the Battle of the Bluegrass. Reese Gaines runs the offense for Louisville. They run a lot of motion. Kentucky opens up the man-to-man -man defense. They like to deny and get after people. That was Fitch. And he got after Marcus Maben, creating the turnover. Tubby Smith, fourth year, 91 wins, only eight off Rupp better in his early Kentucky career. Who's that? Your, your old head coach. <laughs> There's Denny, 30th year, 667 wins. The only active coach who's already in the Hall of Fame. 
Louisville worked very diligently on their defense today and they shoot it out. Didn't do much good there. It was Parker with an easy one. Jason Parker, ultra strong at 6'8", 255. Averaging just nine. They dump it in there tonight. He could have a big game. Yeah, and Bob, you know, it's interesting that both of these starting lineups have got two freshmen each coming out there for their starting five. Turn around, fall away. Down it goes. Reese Gaines pulls to the point guard, goes down low to create a scoring opportunity. That could be very big. The second leading score for this Cardinal club, right behind Marcus Maven. Saul Smith with what appeared to be a turnover, but evidently a card got it on the way out. Calling the action tonight, Tim Higgins, Kerry Sitton, Bob Donato, outstanding veteran officiating crew. Well, looks like they're setting up a 2-3 zone defense. Out of this out-of-bounds play, they go back to Parker again. He's uh, isolated against Mohamed Wasige, who's the newest Cardinal, just became eligible with Eric Brown the other day. The three won't go from outside. Underneath Fitch, some guys too big for him, and the Cards with a good defensive stop. Not unusual to see Fitch in there. He's really been a spark plug for this club. How about five in a row? for Reese Gaines. He's the guy that leads them in assists, averaging about three assists per game. Had a terrific outing against Maryland over in Maui with 22 points. He could shoot. Yeah, he hit three out of five three-pointers in that game, and he gets his first one to go down tonight. And the first foul for the Cardinals will be on Mohamed Lasagay out of Lagos, Nigeria. Just became eligible. Some academic problems, and that case is not cleared up yet. Larry and I will have more on that later. Once again, Louisville back into that zone defense, out of the out-of-bounds play. Kentucky attacks this with a perimeter play. They've been shooting very well from the outside in their last couple of games, particularly in the Indiana on high point game. Evidently, the Louisville bench isn't sitting down with the first two field goals. They are standing over there next to Denny Crum looking for a defensive stop. Fitch drives, dishes, turnover. Cardinals have it in the middle as Eric Brown, who just became eligible, came up with it. Bob it was James again. It was really a good pass by Fitch. Parker was not ready to catch it. Just over two minutes in. 5-2 Louisville. 3-2 Louisville as Marcus Maven, their 24th all-time leading scorer, drains the three. Boy, they're getting the guard leadership so far in this first couple of minutes tonight. Maven and Reese really shooting it well from the outside. The crowd erupts. Bogans. Knocks it down. Tough shot. He was already in the air and on his way down when he released that ball. Larry, how important is it for Louisville to get that kind of leadership early in the game before you fall way behind? Well, it depends on where you're getting it from, and they're getting it from the two guys that they've depended upon most of the year for their scoring. Wow, Reese Gaines. This time he slashes his way. Seven of their ten. Gaines doing a terrific job. He and Maven so far leading the charge. Bogans quick on the whistle. That one's going back the other way. Ellis Miles down in the corner, really extorting his crowd, trying to get them fired up. Nice bounce pass to the inside. But Gaines make this nice turn to the inside. He's an outstanding player. Cardinals of Louisville came in shooting 42%. They come out tonight and go four for four. 10-4 lead, just over three minutes in. A whistle inside. Bob Donato blows it. It was down where Tayshawn Prince was doing some guarding. That's going to be Gerald Fitch, who was right down there with him. That'll be the first for the former Georgia 4A player of the year out of Macon. Bob, I can't stress to you how important it is for Louisville to get off of this and continue because, again, they make another shot. They have yet to miss one. Five out of five, Ellis Miles. The last two have been fairly high percentage shots and some of those Cardinal Red fans up out of their seats with an eight-point lead early. The one thing Denny Crum has struggled with the, with this club this year is their consistency. They'll give you 10 to 12 to 15 minutes of good hard basketball and then they'll disappear for six to eight minutes. Yeah, we saw the streaky Cardinals against Georgetown here a month ago, didn't we? Here's Kentucky looking for some offense. Saul Smith the jumper and it's taken away by Reese Gaines. Straight ahead, Maven, contact, and a Kentucky foul. Defense turned into offense. Well, that's the one thing Denny Crum has been complaining about, with the fact that his club has not been playing very well defensively. That's a pretty good defensive play. Look at this. Gaines all over the shot by Saul Smith. It's an outstanding block and a good look up the floor. He had flashing on the other end, Marcus Maven, for an easy layup. Logan's with a foul from behind. 
Bogans with his first. Four minutes in. Whoops, Maven almost didn't look for the ball. He was waving his man on the wing. Eric Brown around. Here's Reese Gaines dishing. Loose ball. Brown. They are still perfect. Boy, are they hot right now. 14 to 4 Louisville. Who would have thought? Bogans up high for Saul Smith. They're looking to the inside. I think we're going to get a foul down inside. Ellis Miles is trying to guard Stone on that left side. Ellis Miles, the freshman out of California, his first. And the crowd erupts. First media timeout. Tubby concerned. Fans here crazy with the success of their club. Six out of six, 10 point lead. Lost his last two games by a combined total of 46 points. 91 68 to Dayton, 88 65 to Oregon. But one of the problems that Louisville had in that game was the fact that he didn't defend the three point shooting very well. So you look at Reese Gaines' numbers. Already a couple of assists to go with those seven points. He's yet to miss. And that's a big thing because Denny has bemoaned the lack of assists by his club. We mentioned their point guard, their leader only averaging less than four assists per game. Cardinals stay in that 2-3 zone defense. Kentucky working the perimeter, looking to Parker inside if they can get it there. As we mentioned, the Cats have been shooting well lately. 69% against Indiana, 48% overall. They will shoot Louisville out of this zone defense eventually. Prince, a look inside, ball deflected. Caught there by Marvin Stone. Back to Tayshawn. Shot clock at five. Stone pivots, travels. Took that extra step. Pretty good defensive work that time inside by Louisville. Stone had the open shot, tried to get a little bit closer, and turned it over. Three Kentucky turnovers in the first five minutes. Kentucky goes back to his own defense now. At 2 3, they're trying to pack it in. They may want to be concerned about that outside shooting. That's where the Cardinals have been blistering them. Out at the top of that defense, Bogans straight ahead to Miles, high post, and they swing it right side, Maven. Way long and air ball, and that's their first miss. Here's Prince probing his way. You gotta get out and guard him. That's how they'll shoot you out of it. Denny Crum at the shoot around today. I'm not surprised he calls his timeout, Larry. He was adamant that there are three guys on the Kentucky team you've got to guard on the perimeter, and we just saw one of them. Five minutes, 24 seconds in. Big leads can disappear in a hurry. Three of them just went away right there. Sean Prince a moment ago. It's like what he did in this game last year. He put on quite a show as the Cats and the Cards got together. He would try for a couple. He would dunk and would end up the game with 20. He played a little defense, too. Five blocks in the game, and Kentucky decimated Louisville 76-46. You know, but when they've got that three-guard lineup in there, they moved Tayshaun Prince down to the big forward, which is the position he played last year. And at 6'9", with those long arms, he's really good at helping bring the ball up. Hard to press Kentucky when they've got that three-guard lineup and Prince is that big forward. The only problem he has is with the more stronger and physical players down inside. He's not a physical player himself. His wingspan is a little longer than my height. You know, I'm pretty normal at six feet. His wingspan, 74 inches. I'm not sure normalcy is something I would attach to you. <laughs> <laughs> little jump hook won't go for Mohamed Lasage. We're six minutes in. Prince shot him out with a three. Nice pass. Feeds it in Parker. He sealed off Miles, and he gets the shot down. How strong was that by Jason Parker? Bob, one of the things Jason Parker was recruited for out of high school by a lot of people, originally committed to North Carolina, decided to come to Kentucky, was his inside strength. His power and ability to catch the ball down inside. Look at this pass. A terrific pass. A direct bullet down inside to Parker by Prince. Got that basket and enabled Parker to get it up off the glass. Nice look by Prince. Final delivery by Parker. Jason Parker spins it in. Three-point play. He's got five. 14-10. Six consecutive points now by the Cats. Jumper baseline right won't go. Brown and good offensive rebound positioning by Hodge Turner will force a Kentucky over the back. 
Kentucky showing a little bit defensive, different defensive look that time. Look at this nice move down inside and the good strong rebound foul by Parker up over the back as Turner had the better position. Joseph Sima checks in for Louisville. He's the man who's been replaced at the five spot by Muhammad Lossigan. Marcus Maven, bottom of your screen, a three so far. He's Louisville's main man offensively. They swing it out to him. Reese Gaines got tied up a little bit with Tayshawn Prince. Fights off the trap. Nice Turner pass. down low, Brown short. And the loose ball picked up by Marvin Stone of UK. Saul Smith on the counterattack. Straight ahead. Good denial by Hodge Turner. For a moment, it looked like he'd been beaten. He recovered very well. Stone tried to get the ball inside much as Prince did earlier to Parker, who was breaking across the lane, but he couldn't deliver the pass. Pretty good idea, though. Keith Bogans to trigger it in. Better get it in. You can go backcourt from anywhere. Saul Smith back to retrieve it. Louisville with a lot of zone defense this year. We've seen him play this a couple of times. Hogan's a jump stop. A little short with the shot. Kept alive momentarily, but it wouldn't go down for Marvin Stone. Hogan's on the floor. Stepping in to take it away, Joseph Sima. Here come the cards, but it's one on three. And a wise decision by Luke Whitehead. And then Saul Smith with an unnecessary foul 25 feet from the basket. Pretty good, pretty good effort down inside, and that Kentucky scramble down underneath. Watch it again. You'll see Bogans come in. Pretty good shot right there. He kind of laid it back a little bit, and a nice tip by Stone on the right side wouldn't go in. A good, strong rebound in there by Hodge Turner. He almost lost it as Bogans came up with it, and then lost it, and Louisville got it back, and a foul on the other end by Saul Smith. Five team fouls on the Cats right now. Card set four. Just over seven minutes in. Louisville out to a 14-4 start, 14-10 now. Marcus Maven leaves it for Whitehead. He's got no arc on his shot, little short, and the left-hander for Joseph Seema. Seema with a nice grab on the inside. They like Luke Whitehead, but they'd like to see a little more air under that jump shot of his. Saul Smith for Tayshawn Prince. Straight ahead. Wow. Jason Parker sealed his man off and then sealed the deal. But you know, Bob, that's the second time in a row now that Prince has been able to deliver that pass down inside to Parker. A good look, and you make sure you deliver the pass in the right area away from the defender. Well, Tayshawn Prince, you got to go out and guard him because of his three-point shooting ability. He can slash on him. He'll get some looks inside. Reese Gaines, long with the three. Stone skied early. Bogans comes up with it late and fights off a couple of cards who are flapping away at him. Now I've got that. Wings were flapping at those cats. <laughs> Here's Stone. Hodge Turner got a piece of it. Underneath, Parker. Got glass and nothing else, and a rebound for Reese Gaines of Louisville. Kentucky continues to push that ball down inside to Parker. Maybe. Now the iron stuffed him. By the time he fought off Kentucky's defenders, he was under the iron. I think he was expecting to get fouled, and no one ever laid a glove on him. Louisville back into a man-to-man -man defense now. They uh, switched their defense. Whitehead out there guarding Tayshawn Prince. Stone. Parker a little too close to receive that pass from Stone. He needs to back off, get a little deeper. Yeah, a little spacing inside. Yeah. Him, huh? Shot clock down to eight. Saul Smith with the three. Good screen by Stone. He Saul set, Smith is a 37% three-point shooter. Well, he set it up well by using the screen. Some guys don't use screens well. Saul Smith let Stone get in position and then worked his man off of there and drained that three. Nicely done. Remember when Louisville was six out of six? Since then, they're one out of eight shooting. That's what we talked about earlier is their consistency. They seem to they blow hot and cold. Here's Reese Gage penetrating, hanging, getting contact, but short with the shot. Saul Smith, what a look for Bogans. Angles to the glass, can't score. Tayshawn Prince, how did he not travel? What a save. Maybe he never truly had possession. Bogans drives and draws a Louisville fire. That was an outstanding play by Prince. Denny Crum was complaining, saying he traveled, but I don't think he did. Nine minutes, 37 seconds in. Louisville, the quick start, but lately Jason Parker and the Cats on the way back. We expected a close game. I want, I want to go back and show you this excellent screen and use of it by Saul Smith. 
Watch Marvin Stone turn. Now he looks. Now, screen is set. Look at the screen, and look where the man goes behind the screen, allowing Saul Smith to get open for this shot. Good use of the screen by Saul Smith. If you're going to get a shooter, you got to go over the top. He didn't, and it cost him. Saul Smith, a finance and economy, economics major. He will graduate and head to law school. And a lot of pressure on him. It's not easy being the coach's son, especially in Kentucky, with a ball club that's struggling. He's been the object of a lot of criticism over the last couple of years, but he is one who sticks to it. 11-2 run by the Cats, by the way, over the last five and a half minutes, gets them back to within one. We'll go back into that zone defense again. They went away from that man-to-man. -man. Alley -oop. Oh, what a Nation great run. Prince. That is all timing. Not only is the responsibility of the catcher, but is also the responsibility of the passer. Bogan's made a great lob. And Kentucky leads for the first time. As we mentioned, Louisville stone cold now. One of their last night. And shot Brooks in there, number double zero, running the point. Boy, Louisville needs somebody to make a basket right here. They are really struggling right now. Osh Turner angles at corner. Whitehead, there's that low line drive shot. Short again. Reese Gaines gets it on the perimeter. They've got Maven out of the game right now, so who will step up and score? Eric Brown is out of there, who's been starting lately. Cardinals desperately need some offense here. If for no other reason, they'll get some momentum and give them some confidence. Ball moving not very quick against the zone. Almost a throw out. And a decision by Rashad Brooks to get the timeout before he tumbles out of bounds. Bob, let's go back to Vinny Crump really berating his club in, the, in that huddle. Watch this lob pass. You'll see Prince right here with the ball. Now, once it goes back to the outside, it reverses. Watch Bogans deliver it right to the corner. Excellent play by Bogans and a nice catch inside and a finishing touch. Administered right there. Look at this pass by Prince. Boy, that is pretty. Well, tomorrow night, Florida State's football team goes for another national championship. They'll take on the Sooners of Oklahoma. But on Thursday, the basketball team has a tall order. Top-ranked Duke at ACC tilt here on ESPN2 Thursday night. Battier and company. For more information on college basketball, log on to ESPN.com. Two pretty good players right there, Steen Battier, Jason Williams. A lot of people think Jason Williams may be the best guard in the country. I'm not too sure I would argue. Well, he's one of the best. There's no doubt about it. Simon Nadenov, freshman out of Bulgaria, who doesn't play a whole lot for Louisville, missing on that three-point shot. Denny Cole looking for some scoring combos out there now that things have gone cold. They know missed his first three games of the year. He was under some NCAA sanctions because of uh, some rules. Amateur status. Yeah. A lot of kids who come over play for some of those teams over in Europe. It takes a while for the NCAA to determine whether or not those were professional gigs. How do you find out about three games in Bulgaria? The long arm of the law knows no limit. And there's a nice jumper just inside the arc by Marvin Stone. UK leads it out to three now. Kentucky having some effect against Louisville. They're not stealing the ball on this press, but forcing them to slow down that juggernaut that Louisville showed them in the first couple of minutes. Nadenoff runs the baseline. Reese Gaines runs the point. The shot Brooks back to him from the perimeter. Now they send Ellis Miles down low, as well as Joseph Sima. Sima two miles. They were looking for a give and go. Shot clock at four. And a travel as Ellis Miles, the freshman, panicked and came back down with it. We're at Freedom Hall in Louisville. It's the Battle of the Bluegrass State. And after the quick start by the Cardinals, they were up 14 to 4. It's now Kentucky 19-16. Larry Conley, of course, a UK alum. And this uh, series we mentioned started in 1913. They didn't play each other for 62 years. They renewed the rivalry in 83. They've played every year since. Kentucky is 8 and 4 here. These two teams have also met these schools four times in the NCAA tournament, and they've split those four. Had some big games in the NCAA tournament. Prince in the corner. Way long with it. Bogans up high. His shot was blocked. blocked. Four on one. They've got a score now. Brooks, what was that? Oh, what a terrible pass. That was an alley-oop about 10 feet from the iron. Ouch. 
Louisville one basket in the last eight plus minutes. Denny Crum knew he had to have one there. 7.54 to go first half. Well, this is how not to run the break when you're four on one. Play the 19, back to Bob and Larry in Louisville. Thank you, Bob Stevens and Larry. A lot of people weren't talking about Wake as one of the top ACC teams there. Talking about the Deacons now. Well, I'm going to tell you what, they've put together a really good club. Dave Odom had a number of players coming back this year. Robert O'Kelly being one of the great guards in the ACC. Craig Dawson, they've got a terrific club. Pete Gillen, terrific club with Donald Hand in there. Travis Watson down on the inside. This Virginia Wake Forest rivalry could develop into something big this year because both of these clubs are loaded. Folks, you just heard everything you need to know about the Atlantic Coast Conference from Larry Conley, the SEC guy. <laughs> <laughs> J.P. Blevins out on top running the offense for Kentucky now. There's Tayshawn Prince to Pogans on the left wing. J.P. Blevins, a good shooter. Denny Hasn't Crump. had much success so far this year, though. Excuse me, but I was going to say, Denny Crump changed his defense now. He's gone back to his man-to-man. -man. Kentucky immediately looks to the inside again. Stone out to Prince. Miles left him, but he couldn't leave the three down in there. Here's Marcus Maven in transition for Louisville, down by three, despite the fact that they've really been cold shooting. They've hit one of their last 11 shots. Cardinals really struggling after getting off to that quick start. What did they miss? Six in a row? Six straight. Seven of 17 now. They have not been to the line, so that indicates they haven't exactly been slashing to the basket at all. No, it's mostly been perimeter shooting like this. Games. There it is. They needed it. That's 10 for the sophomore point guard out of Madison, Wisconsin. Now, that might give them the lift. And they got it from a guy that they need some leadership from, Reese Gaines. He averages 14. He already has 10. Only player on either club in double figures. They've got Joseph Seema out top guarding Tayshawn Prince. Kentucky doing a lot of screening down inside. There's Blevins with a look down low. Gets it back from Eric Daniels. Prince. Wow! On the catch, he was already in full flight. Did we just see that in the highlight we saw about a year ago? <laughs> I have a feeling when these teams play next year, that'll be in our producer's flashback. Dribble penetration. Shot blocked by... Kentucky on the attempt by Eric Brown and then down low Ellis Miles. He's fouled on the baseline well before the shot. Looked like Marvin Stone. Watch Tayshawn Prince come around this screen wide open. Nobody there to challenge. Ellis Miles was late getting there. He just watched and admired. That's 37 inches of that wingspan with that one arm. Full extension. Here's Gaines slashing. Eric Brown looking on top for Marcus Maven, who's been quiet, except for his early three. They need more from him. He leads the cards at 20 a game. Kentucky stays in their matchup. They're 2-3 zone right now. The Cardinals have really struggled with this. I thought maybe the way they were shooting from the outside, it would help. And they missed with, with an air ball. Wow, not even close. Tayshawn Prince straight ahead. Great look for Bogans. Too strong. And so is Eric Daniels. Must be something on the backboard up there. Both of those shots ricocheted off of there. Games. He's got 13. Oh, what a first half he's had. His season high, 26 against Loyola. He's halfway there. And Bob, he actually shoots better from three-point range than he does overall. Bogan's on the drive. And Louisville had to foul him to stop him. That'll be on Reese Gaines. It'll be his second. One of the things I've noticed about Kentucky's offense in this first half, in their half-court game, they are getting a lot of one-on-one -on -one maneuvers down inside. Louisville not adjusting very well and coming over and giving help when one of their guys gets beat defensively. You saw Prince go down the middle. That time, Bogans almost had an easy one going down the lane himself. Ryan Northern checks in. Coming off a 10-point game against Murray State. He had 13 against Dayton. He's given... Denny Crump, some good walk-on minutes off the bench lately. Nice to have those kind of walk-ons. Well, little kid out of Jeffersonville, Indiana. They know a little bit about shooting uh, both north of the Ohio and on this side. Saul Smith back. Bogans gets a breather. Keith Bogans, only two points so far. I assume you're talking about the river. The Ohio River. <laughs> We are in River City, Louisville, Freedom Hall. Place is full. They are normally in the top five in attendance in college basketball on this floor. Levin swings it right side. Gerald Fitch, haven't heard much from him. 
Levin's on top. Saul Smith squares for three. He's two for two out there. Smith doing a nice job. You know the one thing I've noticed about him this year as opposed to other years? He's letting the game come to him. He's finding the open shot, taking the open shot when it's there, and not forcing anything. Denny I Crum. think that, that really is important because it gives him a lot of leadership on this club. When do coaches coaching young teams call timeout early and frequently? That's his third of the game already, and he's in the face of Bryant Northern for not guarding Saul Smith. Well, the one thing you've got, and it's true, you've got young players, you've got to give them some inspiration and also some teaching out there. That looked pretty inspiring to me. <laughs> Denny Crump very, very upset. I'm going to tell you what, his face is about as red as his shirt. Once again, folks, keep your eyes out for the fifth third bank. Teams for three. Denny Crump talking about coaching young players here at Louisville. They've got to do the thing. It's hard to get young guys to sometimes realize that they've got to do the things in practice that'll beat the good teams. Uh, they, they get a little frustrated when you correct something in practice that they may have been able to get done against another freshman, but when they get in against experienced players, it won't work. You know, that's a great point. I mean, you go up against guys in your own team, uh, maybe they, have, they do not have as much experience as the clubs are playing. And right now, Denny Crump's trying to adjust it right now, trying to get his ship put in the right direction. That ball is blocked by Tayshawn Prince. Miles hustles. He puts it on the shoulder of Marquise Esco. And how about that to get it back for Louisville? Heads up play, literally. Well, that's one way to do it. Watch this. Just lay it on his shoulder. Yeah, just put it on it right there. Let him carry it out of bounds. 11 seconds, 11 seconds. I guess if you watch this game long enough, Larry, it's like baseball and football. You'll see things you've never seen before. I remember Jack Buck telling me that once about baseball. So you can watch it for 30 years and you'll always see something you've never seen. I've never seen a guy carry a ball out of bounds on the back of his neck until just then. <laughs> Marcus Maven out on top. Switched by Fitch. Whitehead for Rashad Brooks. His three, right down it goes. Hawkins went too far that time on the defense. He was over trying to help, and it opened up that right side and an easy shot. Almost a turnover at the other end. Prince for Saul Smith. Nice no-looker. Estel on top. Cliff Hawkins, Smith, Prince, short, got his own. Nice, nicely done that time by Prince. Went on, got, went up, got his own shot, and put it back before Little had a chance to respond. And great ball movement by the Cats on that possession. That thing was flying around. There's a steal. Gerald Fitch, two on two. He'll wait for the secondary break now for Prince. Tayshawn Prince at 6'9". Able to do anything on the perimeter. Estel, I thought he was going to slam it. He tried to baby it in, took a little contact to draw the foul. Nicely done again by Tayshawn Prince. He'll look to the inside, pass away from the defense, down low on the block. Look for your big man. Look at this right here. Now watch the ball. Now stop right here. Look at this. You see that pass? Prince right there delivering the pass right where he wanted to. Wide open, nobody contesting the inside play, and an easy turnaround and drawing of the foul by Marquise Esther. Ice Turner checks back in for Louisville. They call him their garbage man. He gets rebounds to outrun people in the transition game. Marquis Sesto at the line. Tough player. Just a sophomore. Didn't play last year as a partial qualifier. So in terms of experience, he's still a baby cat. We've got a timeout with 3.33 to go first half. It's been entertaining. Bit of a seesaw affair so far. And the Cats on top of the cards by two. Well, Syracuse tough to beat. That makes what Tennessee did up there even more impressive. You know, Bob, it's, it's interesting on January the 2nd that so many of the conferences launching into their conference play. Two of these two clubs right here, both Louisville and Kentucky, get into conference play this weekend. Conference USA has already had a couple of conference games in the month of December. How about Southern Miss? Huh? They are really something How so far, aren't they? They beat Arkansas. Something's happening in the state of Mississippi down there. University of Mississippi in the top 25 yeah. in January. Mississippi State, a great bowl win over Texas A&M for Jackie Sherrill. 
And their basketball team's pretty athletic. We saw them in the NIT looking very good. Might have been the win against Arizona the other night in Tucson. Yeah. Maven, right side, air ball. Hodge Turner. Ball on the floor and a whistle. Larry, while we have just a second, you and I are huge fans of Lute Olson. We've been to Tucson on numerous occasions and met Bobby. Our condolences to Luce, uh, to Lute on the loss of his wonderful wife. What a great lady for him and for basketball she was in the state of Iowa and Arizona. She was terrific, and uh, we do. We pass on our condolences to Lute and all of his family. Uh, she was a terrific lady. Mm. And Lute Olson will come back when he's ready. Jim Rossboro, very capable assistant. Longtime Lute Olson assistant handling things for the Wildcats out there. Right now, we seem to have a debate going on about the shot clock. It says zero on it. 2.56 to go. That's Tim Higgins, the lead official. And they're going to call it a shot clock violation. That's it's going back the other way. That's exactly what they're calling. They're saying Louisville did not get the shot off, and therefore the ball goes back to Kentucky. Now, Tim will go over and explain things to Denny Crum, who doesn't seem to be satisfied with the explanation of Kerry Sitt. You know what I think happened down there is, is the, uh, the fracas right in front of the Kentucky bench down there. Louisville got the ball back on possession, but because the shot clock had gone down to zero, they lost their opportunity to get the shot off. If the ball had gone out of bounds and Kentucky had not touched it last, then it would have come back to Kentucky on their possession. Saul Smith runs the offense for the Cats. On top for Bogans. Marcus Maven watching Saul, who's at a couple of threes, so they got a veteran player on him, on him now after Northern made the mistake of not getting out there. Barely nicking iron Bogans. Whitehead fouled in the backcourt. Who got it? It'll be Marquis Estill with his first. Luke Whitehead dribbled into some double team traffic there as Estill and Gerald Fish were pawing away at him. Not, great, exact, not exactly the guy you want handling the basketball coming across midcourt. Great rivalry. UK leads at all time, 21 to 10. First game was played in 1913. Ellis Miles stopped. Didn't look like he ever left the floor, and it's going back to Kentucky. Hey, if you're watching us tonight, you should check out College Hoops tonight. Your in-depth look at the world of college basketball. News scores right through Selection Sunday. Jay Billis, Brad Doherty analyze all the issues. College Hoops tonight. And for more information, log on to ESPN.com. And you can find out everything you need for college basketball. Saul Smith. Early in the possession. Not a good shot. I don't think Dad would be too happy with that. Kentucky's got a little bit cold now in the last couple of minutes. Cardinals with a chance to maybe take advantage of this. Kentucky back into that 2-3 matchup. Marcus Maven on the perimeter for Hodge Turner. Swings it in the corner for Whitehead. Rashad Brooks. Everybody, other than the freshman, Ellis Miles touching on that possession. They come up empty. Bogans, good look. Fitch banks it in. Gerald Fitch with his first basket. There were two good plays right there on that break. One by Bogans to not take a bad shot and give the ball up at the proper time. Fitch down underneath to allow two Cardinals to fly by him and take the easy layup off the glass. Nicely done. Saw Smith in the passing lane with a deflection. Louisville will check Eric Brown back in. Well, go back and take a look at this break right now. Prince gets it out in front. Now, Bogans has got Now, look at this right here. He comes to the right side. You see he's got it. Now, watch Saul Smith. Or, or, I'm sorry. Not Saul Smith. The Fitch right down on the inside coming from the left side. Now watch this fake. Two guys go by, and as soon as they're gone, he lays it off the glass. That is excellent way to handle the break. 117 to go in the half. Bob Stevens in our college basketball studio tonight of the Super 8 halftime report. Battle of Unbeatens, a Big East matchup over on ESPN tonight. And Bob will update you on Rick Majerus, who's in the hospital after chest pains, undergoing an angioplasty today. We hope he's all right. He's one of my favorite people. Oh, man. Jimmy Dykes, my Monday night Mountain West buddy, he's been in contact with some of Rick's friends out in Salt Lake City. And hopefully we'll learn more about the condition at halftime of Rick Majerus as well. Utah needs him back on the sidelines. 
He's probably sitting there with his X and O's board right now watching this one. Utah played here in Louisville last year. Eric Brown, way long. Marcus Maven skying for the rebound, deflected out of bounds by Mark Reese Estill. They've got a chance now to hold the ball for the last shot of the first half. Yeah, Denny Crump's off of the bench now. He's holding up his one finger, saying, hold the ball for the last shot. Only about a second difference between the clocks. Well, Louisville can hit a shot here. They're in good shape. They're down by just four. They led by ten. Their biggest deficit, five. And now we're down to ten seconds. Rashad Brooks on the drive. In deep. Too deep. Bogans taken away. Eric Brown down low. Yes. Ellis Miles. Bad job of Louisville giving it away. Kentucky gave it right back up. And the Cardinals do get their last shot they were hoping for. Watch again, you'll see him right here, the maneuver on the inside. A terrific pass down in there by Eric Brown, and an easy one for the Cardinals. Gets him back within four. 29-27 at the half with that make. And so, after the 10-point early lead, Kentucky leads by two. Bob Stevens joins you in just a minute. Kentucky then uh, sort of fails to take advantage of how cold the cards went after that 6-6 start and only a two-point game at the half. Your thoughts? Well, Bob, I really thought the first half really lead toward the Cardinals early then. Kentucky picked it up. And the highlights will indicate this because there were really only two guys that I really think carried the load for these two clubs respectively. And I'm talking about Reese Gaines and Kayshawn Trent. Gaines got it done from just about everywhere on the floor. He was making shots outside, inside. His three-point shooting was outstanding. He was three out of four from beyond the stripe. Now, for Kentucky on the other side, I thought Prince had an outstanding all-around first half. Not only did he have nine points, but he had five rebounds, three assists, a block, and a steal in that first half. He got it done almost everywhere and on both ends for the Wildcats. Played every minute of the first half. Jason Parker, seven points, one rebound, one assist. In just 10 minutes, Reese Gaines leading the way, a couple of assists, no turnovers in the first half. Good news for Denny Crum there. How about the two leading scorers? Keith Bogans only with two points in the first half, and Marcus Maven with three. How about that? Maven got his three very early. Nothing since. And there's a three from the corner for the sliding Keith Bogan. So as if on cue, he says, Mr. Conley, I can stroke it myself. He must have heard me. <laughs> Well, great shooting has always been a part of Kentucky basketball, and Bogans, nice stroke there. Here's Gaines looking to penetrate. Bogans stopped in cold. Turnover nearly. Fitch almost got it. Now Marcus Maven has to get involved. Kentucky's back into a man-to-man -man defense. They played mostly zone in the first half. Tough look. Wow. They still had eight on the shot clock. Ellis Miles had it tipped away momentarily. They got a fresh 35 to work with here. Gaines falls. Ball tipped by Kentucky, so Louisville can pick that up in the backcourt just fine. Smith and Bogans both on the floor trying to get the ball. Rims out for Eric Brown, what would have been a three. And a Louisville foul will send it back the other way after the miss. Louisville foul is on number 45, Mohamed Lassigay. Mohamed Lassigay with his third. First team foul of the half. Take a look at the first half stats right there. Kentucky with 44% shooting, but once again, their defense holding their opponent under 40%. Points in the paint were crucial in that first half. Most of them won Kentucky's way. Saul Smith on the perimeter. Fitch for Bogans. Fitch of Louisville sitting in a 2-3 right now. Fitch a little reluctant to look up at the basket. He was wide open at the top of that three-point line. UK will have it. Fresh 35 after the kick by Mohamed Lasage. 32-27. Out of the break. Quick look inside. Parker. Well, they did it early. Seems like their early offense in each half is to dump it down to Jason and let the 6'8 freshman operate. Well, that's the, the mode of oper operation right now for Kentucky. Make sure Parker gets it down low on that block. He's a pretty good operator in there with that size. Well, there's no doubt Louisville is thin inside. That's one of the reasons Lassigate comes out of nowhere, gets eligible, and suddenly he's a starter. Looks like a foul on Kentucky's number four, Gerald Fitch. 
Number 55, Joseph Seema. Joseph Seema back in for Louisville. Wyatt start to the second half until Saul Smith calls a timeout. He steals it, and while tumbling into the Louisville bench, he gets the T.O. Bob, I know that's a strategic play, and it's great the players can think that quickly on their feet, but I hate that call. I mean, the ability of a guy to be able to just call the timeout before he goes out of bounds, I really wish they would change that rule. I don't know if they ever will. Well, I know some guards who like the rule, as they save it now and then, but I'm with you on that one, partner. Hey, it's a new year. Already the golf season underway. The Accenture Match Play Championship from Australia. 22 of the top 39 in the world take on defending champ Darren Clark. Coverage begins tonight, 9.30 Eastern on ESPN with a preview show, and then 10 o'clock first round matches for more log on to espn.com now how about that some 10 o'clock golf tonight oh what was it uriah heap that said that today is only yesterday's tomorrow something like that golf at 10 o'clock i like it fitch shuffle his feet that's a turtle tubby smith said wait a minute what happened to the pivot Tubby doing a nice pivot in his loafers there. He was. <laughs> Stayed inside the box and everything's showing his moves. That's a ball that's going back the other way now. A little ragged are we? Two and a half minutes out of halftime and immediately a grab off the inbounds play. Prince is trying to maneuver down the sideline right there. Nellis Miles just reached out and grabbed him. Tim Higgins was right there watching him. You know, if you're going to commit a foul, make sure the referee isn't looking. There's Tubby with his nice maneuver right there. A little pirouette. Probably a pretty good dancer. Tubby is light on his feet. A great success in his first head coaching job at Tulsa. Value backdoor, and it's the 6-9 Prince again, and Son Saul found him. Nice pass by Saul Smith that time. 7-0 run out of the locker room. I mean, Kentucky could put Louisville away right here. They're up by nine. There's Smith gambling for a near steal. Reese Gaines. Plenty of time on the shot clock right now at 15. They're 0 for 2 with a couple of turnovers this half, and there's a five-second call. Reese Gaines got so involved with his own dribbling, he forgot about the five-second count. Watch again right here. Saul Smith the ball. Now, here's where it works. You make sure you look at this right there. The lob pass is beautiful, but you got to make sure it's near the rim. Perhaps you just target it right for the bottom of the rim and let the guy go up and get it. Parker seals. Jason Parker with 11. Kentucky off to a really good start in the second half. Denny Crump needs a timeout. 9-0. UK run to lead by 11. It's the way you do it. Make sure you put the ball in the hands of the guy in the proper places on the floor where they can make baskets. And that's what Kentucky's done to start this second half. How do they get 11-point lead? You put the ball down inside. Look at the spin move right here. Parker with a nice turn. And a nice pass again. Look where the pass comes. Away from the defender. You can see right there, Eric Brown trying to guard inside against Parker. Forget it. Big side mismatch. Yeah, you just saw why Jason's five out of six tonight. He said some high percentage slams. Well, when you look at his numbers, I mean, the fact that he's up there shooting 53%, most of those come on the inside. Larry, i got to ask you about the SEC East. Preseason, Kentucky was ranked number 12. They were picked second behind Tennessee, ahead of Florida. I don't know if anybody would be picking them behind or ahead of Florida right now. How do you feel about this Kentucky team? Well, I, as I said at the beginning of the show, I really think they've made the turn, and I think the Indiana game was the game that helped them turn it around. But, you know, it's just one game. You've got to go out there and perform for 40 minutes consistently every night. I think Kentucky may be on the verge of doing that, though. They look like they might be coming together. Marcus Maven, tough guy. Nice shot. Guy. How about that for a soft touch? Well, they need something from him. Here's a guy who only was one for three in the first half, averaging 20 a game. He's had eight 20-point games this year, and with that basket, only five tonight. Now Luther's gone back to their man-to-man -man defense. Now Leo, back door. This time it's Bogans. And from Saul Smith, he couldn't finish it. Maybe not a true alley-oop, more of a pass just over the top of the defense. Gaines, tough shot. Rebound, Sima, right to the glass. He just bombed it off the backboard. 
He might have cracked the glass. Bogans for three. That could be a heartbreaker. Bogans with eight on the night, six since halftime. So you miss a layup and you give up three at the other end. And now Louisville's down by 12. Talk about the two leading scores for these respective clubs. Maven at 20 a game. Bogans at 17. Bogans is starting to pick up toward his average because he's gotten hot the second half. Kentucky has outscored Louisville 37 to 14 since it was 14 to 4. There's Maven. Good drive. Looked like he might have drawn a foul on Fitch. That's going to be Jason Parker who rotated over to help out on the drive to the basket. Bob, one of the things I discussed with Denny Crum today at the shoot around was his club and the selection of their shots. He's not happy with the types of shots that they're taking. He feels like that they are taking some that really aren't high percentage shots and he's tried to tell his club about that. In fact, his point was made so emphatically that on New Year's Eve, he spent seven and a half hours in a film and tape room showing them some of the shots they've been taking. He's been very unhappy with their shot selection. They might have gone on a lot longer if Denny wouldn't have had a four o'clock radio show to do. Marcus Maven with a half dozen tonight. These are Louisville's first free throws of the night. Neither team even reached the bonus in the first half. And Maven has seven. But right now, folks, it's all cats. Tubby working hard, showing his moves. We've got dunks off the alley-oop by Tayshawn Prince. We've got Jason Parker down low. And the Cats lead by 10. Kentucky roars out of halftime where they led by two. Now they lead by 10 at a 9-0 run, shooting the basketball pretty well lately, as Larry and I talked about earlier. In the first half, 44%. Five out of six, they sizzle here. But uh, those are really high percentage shots they're getting, too. Yeah, exactly. Parker and Bogans have been the two guys that led them so far in the second half. Bogans on the outside and Parker on the inside. And Louisville's big problem is always going to be, as they're so young, who's going to step up yeah, but to what's... stop a one out of five, one out of six? See, it's a little bit more aggressive now. They're extending, coming out on the ball, stopping that first pass from ball to the first man, and there's a foul down the inside. Eric Brown reaching around. Tayshawn Prince, that'll be his first. Tubby Smith, as we mentioned earlier, only Adolph Ruff has a better record in four years, first four years of coaching the Cats. Tubby even better than Rick Pitino's numbers. Of course, Pitino had a little more of a rebuilding job at the start of his time, bringing them back from probation. Louisville needs a make here, don't they? Badly. Marcus Maven runs the point. Both teams have gone back to their man-to-man -man defenses. Oh, nice great pass. look. Gaines. He made a nice back cut. Pete Carrillo would have loved that play, the yeah. old Princeton coach. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, Luke Whitehead did a nice job of looking inside. Nice cut. Looking like a little fundamental basketball to get yourself an easy hoop. Here's Bogans to the uh, glass. It counts, and he is fouled. Oh, that's what I was talking about in the first half. Kentucky finding a lot of one-on-one -on -one moves going down that lane and Louisville very late in responding, not getting over. They're not coming over to help when one of their guys gets beat. Look at Bogans go down the middle. See, now right there, Seema is late getting over. If you're going to rotate, you've got to get there before the guy gets up for a shot. Bogans at the line trying to complete the three-point play that would give him 11. He had a 26-point game against the Hoosiers when UK beat Indiana 88-74 here at Freedom Hall, by the way, and shot 69%. He was quoted in the local paper here as saying he loves playing here because he thinks the Rams, the background shooting at Freedom Hall, really responds to the way he plays. And that's from a kid who grew up in Virginia. How do you know about this place? <laughs> Reese Gaines taken away from behind. Saul Smith, stone on the floor. And uh, cards come out with it. Gaines long with the three. Rebound, Marvin Stone of Kentucky. Cats are five and five with their five losses by a combined total of 14 points. Against a pretty good schedule. And the only real blemish there, and this is with all due respect to Penn State, that was Kentucky's home open. When have they ever lost a home open? Levin's wide open, decided not to take it, and goes inside. Tayshawn Prince turning to face. Whitehead tries to stay with him. Pretty good stop. 
T.J. Blevins open. Prince, short little jumper, won't go. Bogans, no. They had another shot at it. Stone misses twice. He was rejected. Good stop by the Cards. Real that good. That was outstanding defense by the Cardinals. Reese Gaines <laughs> finally dribbling his way out of the little pressure cooker there for a moment. Cards are down by 11. This one's certainly within reach with 13-15 remaining. From the corner, short, Eric Brown. Rebound, Tayshawn Prince. That time, Kentucky went back into their matchup zone defense. We're going to have to decide what I'm going to run by taking a look and see what they're going to do. Prince has six rebounds to go with his 11 points. He missed by plenty there. Don't usually see him miss by that much with an open look. Here's Gaines. Looking to slash. Dishing. Down it goes. Nice Whitehead's enough. first basket. While you dribble penetrate, you find an open teammate. Whitehead was standing wide open, eight feet out. That gets it back to nine. Levins for three. Well short. Luke Whitehead the rebound. He was a prep star at Oak Hill last year. Gaines. Down it goes. Reese Gaines with 17. Good use of the screen that time. Stone was reluctant to come out and challenge him. You got to go after the shooters. Freedom Hall crowd, 19,000 strong. Back into it. Tayshawn Prince passes the open look, slashes, misses, and taken away. It'll belong to Kentucky. But. The cards did prevent an easy cat basket right there. Rashad Brooks will check in. Reese Gaines is absolutely gassed. He was tugging on the shirt, said, Coach, get me out of here. I tell you what, they can't afford to leave him over there for too long because he's really been the offensive show for a little bit tonight. I'd say give him an oxygen mask, give him 30 seconds, and shove him back out there. <laughs> <laughs> he has really been scoring for Denny tonight. 17 for Reese, the sophomore out of Wisconsin. Nice little jump off Marvin Stone. That's his second basket. Nice turn by Stone that time. That's a shot that he needs to perfect and work on it and keep doing it. He needs to go both ways with it. Eight minutes out of halftime. Kind of a, one of those times of the game, Larry, that test, it'll test your mental toughness right now. Not quite down the stretch. A long way to go. Maven. Oh, yeah. He's getting involved. Marcus with nine. Now, if he gets hot for Louisville, this could be a different game than his last 12 minutes. He's had six since that time, and the cards are back to within seven. Cards back into that man-to-man -man defense again. Tough defense by Luke Whitehead. Kentucky not exactly flying around the floor right now, but Fitz takes off. Rejected Eric Brown. Only thing they couldn't do was keep it in bounds. Oh, there was a foul call. Tim Higgins down on the baseline. Got Eric Brown for the foul, his second. Bob, again, a good one-on-one -on -one maneuver right here. Watch Gerald Fitch right here. Used to screen by Prince. He crushes him and then goes right down the lane, and nobody from Louisville there to help. You know, if there was a foul that appeared to be before the shot, a uh, little body contact there. Yeah, I agree with you. I think the push might have come before the shot for that. Yeah. But Fitch is shooting, and that's three for him on the night. Gerald Fitch, Georgia 4A Player of the Year. His number since becoming a starter recently. He chose Kentucky over Clemson and Florida State out of Westside High School, Macon, Georgia. Now, they're the Seminoles, but he decided to be a Wildcat. Four for Fitch. 11-10 to go. Lots of basketball left. Reese Gaines may be exhausted right now, but he gave us some nice moments while he's in there. 17, it's UK by nine. Tech early. Well, Kentucky played Georgia Tech early, losing by a couple. Larry? Let's take a look at Reese Gaines right here. Now, I was talking about driving and dishing. Watch Gaines go inside. Now, he's going to draw defenders here, here, and here. Four guys looking for the ball. What does he do? Once they get in there, he drops it off in the corner. That's what we talk about, attracting the defense and finding an open teammate. Nicely done. And that's one of the things Louisville has not done that much of this year. Reese Gaines came into this game with 43 assists in 12 games, but 36 turnovers. He's still getting a breather. He's done it all tonight. But they can't afford, as Larry said, to sit him down very long. Hey, he's only a sophomore. He should be ready to get back in there soon. Kentucky back into their man-to-man -man defense. Take a look at the second-half shooting. 
Well, last season against Kentucky, they couldn't find anything. Three for 27. I think you and I were sitting out in Las Vegas watching that game prior to a doubleheader we had out there. We could not believe Louisville's inability to make shots. Luke Whitehead has made two here since halftime. Glad you told everybody we were in Las Vegas doing a doubleheader. We were working. 48-41. <laughs> Running down to the 10-minute mark. Cardinals back in their man-to-man. -man. Do they go inside? Kentucky looks. Stone wants it. Prince is thinking lob. Nothing there. Saul Smith on the perimeter for Bogans. Looking to drive on Maven. Some help from Eric Brown. Ian Seema rejected, but a foul. Parks did a good job of rotating over that time. They were unlucky not to get the ball back quickly. One of the rare times we've seen Louisville down inside rotate well. Looks like the foul's going to go the other way. Oh, a Kentucky foul. Marvin Stone with his second. This could get interesting. Right now it's only a three-possession game. A little early to be talking in those terms, but... They were down by a bunch. Here's Brown. Down it goes. Eric with his second basket. And it's 48-43. Denny Crump's kids are battling back. Eric Brennan has really given this ball a lift since he came over. The transfer from Morehead State. Really helping the Cardinals playing much better. Logan's down for Prince. He traveled. Must have barely shuffled that second foot. You can't argue with the position of Tim Higgins. He was five feet away. And looking at both feet. Across the timeline with two seconds to spare go the cards. A make here and they're real close. Maven on top. Swings it for shot Brooks. Whitehead says give me the ball. Brooks did. Twice in fact. Shot clock inside 10. Brooks, that's a bad pass down around the feet of his offensive main. 9.08 to go. Freedom Hall in Louisville. The bluegrass battle tonight. Carpenter and Conley with you. Larry, of course, played at UK back in the 60s. Never got to play against the Louisville Cardinals as this series took a 62-year hiatus. Why didn't they play? You know, Bob, they just decided they weren't going to play. And, uh, you know, Jenny Crum and I have talked about that on occasion because I've probably done more little games in my TV broadcast career than any team I've done. <laughs> Don't know why it was. Well, they're happy to be playing now. At least Denny says they are. We can usually trust coaches on things like that. Here's Fitch looking to drive. Saul Smith looking to drive. Looking to dish and looking to slam is Marvin Stone. That's what Smith needs to do. He needs to get the ball down inside. He has had a very nice game tonight. Kentucky back up by seven with eight and a half to go. Oh, a tough trap at midcourt. Louisville barely got out of it. And then a foul on Bogans. He was trying to stay with Whitehead. Saul, Saul Smith doing exactly what his dad wants him to do. Drive, dribble, penetrate, find the open man. Stone was wide open. Look at that backboard moving around. You know what? Now take a look at those numbers right there. Six points, four assists. I don't think he's, he has had a turnover all night long. You know, and only four shots. That's just fine. That's what Tubby's looking for from Saul. And there's a three. Eric Brown, he's got seven. And we've got a four-point game. You gotta remember, Eric Brown led all freshmen in scoring when he was a freshman at Morehead State. And I'm talking about in the country. 19 points a game two years ago as a first-year player. He was all Ohio Valley and their freshman of the year. Gets the steal. Whitehead, coast to coast. Cardinals picking up their defense now. Tubby wants a timeout. <laughs> Terrific comeback by the Cardinals. What they've done, they've done it on both ends, and this Cardinal crowd is really on their feet. A Louisville 9-2 run. It took three minutes and 10 seconds, and they wiped out seven of the nine-point lead. 
Take a look at Eric Brown from beyond the three-point line, nailing that big three. Knocked off three points off of that deficit. Now watch the steal. A little inattention that time by Bowman's and a good alert play by Brown to pick it up. He shuffles it ahead to Luke Whitehead for an easy layup, and Louisville right back in this game. We talked about this at the top of the show. The Cardinals are 4-8. and eight. They've lost their last two games by a combined 46 points to Dayton and Oregon on this floor. There is no telling what a win over their arch rival and a better ranked opponent Kentucky could do for this team as it looks ahead to Conference USA. Long way to go though. Fitch. Saul Smith. Cards are man to man all over the floor. Shot clock approaches 10. It's there. Bogan's on the perimeter. Trying to post up, there's Marvin Stone. Nice little two-man game. What a pick and roll that was. And what, wow. a, what a move by Stone. I'm going to tell you, Louisville played as good a defense for 30 seconds as they have played all night long. They were keeping the ball away from the middle. They were denying the first pass, denying the lob pass. Then all of a sudden, the pick and roll, Stone goes inside, Bogans finds him. The rotation by Louisville, too late, and Stone with the left hand. Marcus Maven, the foul with the reach in. Nine for Marvin Stone. He's got seven since halftime. And we're seeing something take place here. All the big players for these two clubs have really produced in the second half. All right, come to Salem, Bob. Well, that's a good Wake Forest team putting it on Virginia at home. Larry Conley alongside. We've got a good one here at Freedom Hall in Louisville. Let's summarize this thing for you. The shooting, pretty good. Three pointers. Louisville was five out of ten in the first half. A little bit cold there. Points in the paint belong to Jason Parker and the Wildcats right now. But not that many turnovers, not that many fouls. Larry, we've had a basketball game. Well, tonight. we have in the fact that Louisville's increased their shooting percentage from 39% at halftime to 47 would indicate and the reason why they've got back in this game. Now Kentucky goes back to their 2-3 matchup. Five-point spread, seven minutes to go. Eric Brown off with the three. Cats trying to get the defensive rebound, and finally Tayshawn Prince does. You know, Prince has done a pretty good job on the backboard tonight. He's known as a perimeter player, but he really has been a pretty good rebounder. He's had seven tonight. Saul Smith runs the point for the Cats. Marvin Stone up high. Carlos Miles on him. With Parker back in that lineup, they look inside. They're Stone. And they're trying to double down, aren't they? Stone, yes, and a foul. He did it again. Saul Smith with a chest bump. I think Saul's going to get bruised in that situation. It, 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 Marvin Stone a little bit bigger. Let's take a look now from the top. You can see right there, Tubby taking a look. Now look at this maneuver right here. Look at Stone right there. He's in great position to receive the ball. Once he seals off, the nice pass to the inside allows him to make that maneuver. Does he get another three-point chance? No, nope, missed that one, but they got it back. Oh, brother. There's a pitch. Look like Gerald Fitch with a half dozen that he has now. That's big. 57-48. That gets it back to nine for Kentucky. I'm surprised to see Fitch go up there and rebound. He had nine rebounds against Michigan State, one of the best rebounding teams in the country. Now, what's that all about? That was at the Breslin Center. Not many big men do that. Good ball movement by the Cards. Good possession. Ellis Miles with the finish. Now, that time they did a nice job. Using a little triangulation. The ball on the point, go to the corner, go to the middle, and get it to the basket. Very nicely done. Stone for Saul Smith. Reese Gaines on him. Stone, not a three-point shooter. He turns, and it's stripped away. Eric Brown up with it. Eric Brown's had two steals here in the last few minutes. Stone not known for getting to the basket that way from that position on the floor, and Brown took full advantage of it. Good defensive hands. Marcus Maven, they swing it around. Gaines to Brown. Three pretty good players on the perimeter for Louisville right now. Good, good pass. Look. And a foul. Stone fouling Joseph Seema to deny him the layup. Well, Reese Gaines made a nice move that time. Again, down into the lane. And Louisville about to go to the line for only the third time tonight. Look at that, Bob. That's just a terrific no-look pass. You can see Stone commit the foul right there. And one to the lane, Seema. Reese Gaines has only one turnover tonight with four assists going with his 17 points. Handling the ball very well and shooting it well. 
You throw a line drive like that, it's got to be perfect to go down. And Joseph Sima is now 18 for 24 at the line this year. Gitmo gets back for the Cats. He has 11 with nine of those since halftime. Sima out of uh, Paris, France. Pretty nice recruiting trip there. You can see the ball like he's been on the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Didn't play basketball until he was 16, then played for the French junior national team for three years. Volleyball soccer player is Joseph Seaman. Trying to become a basketball player here in the States. Prince penetrated, left-hander. Even his soft touch couldn't make it go in, and Seema pulls down his seventh rebound. Reese Gaines hasn't scored in a while. Eric Brown goes baseline. Cut off there by Marvin Stone. Gets it right back. Long with it. Rebound. Jason Parker. Kentucky could be in a little bit more patient the last couple of minutes. I think Tony Smith wants a half-court game. After Louisville cut the lead to two, they built it back up to seven, and they've done it basically with their half-court game. And Kentucky can play a slow game. They did it at Michigan State. Oh, there's Bogans with a three. They played Michigan State 46-45 at the Breslin Center. And Tony told us today, without a late mistake, they could have won that game. So they're versatile, they can run, they can shoot, but they can grind it out as well. Here's Gaines, penetrating, knocking it down. Is he tough? Reese Gaines with 19 tonight. And if you couldn't get him, he drops it off to a teammate down underneath. Reese Gaines playing a really well-rounded game tonight. Well, there aren't many scoring point guards around. That's a good hustle play by Gaines. Whitehead waiting at the table to come in, couldn't wait to come in and congratulate him. We've got the under four minute media timeout. 3.55 to go, Cats by eight. I think we're poised for a good finish in Louisville. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Sonic, America's drive-in. Freedom Hall is full tonight. They've seen a good one. Eight-point game. Will it end up like the nail-biter in 95? Denny Crum on New Year's Day. And Rick Pitino was there as well with his Cats of Kentucky. It was a tight game late. Louisville would go ahead on a three-point play. And then Kentucky's Jeff Shepard down low, rejected as they tried to tie. Louisville held on and upset number five Kentucky, 88-86. Larry, there's a lot of rivalry here, but there's a lot of respect as well. Oh, there is. And both of these coaches really like each other. I mean, Denny Crump's been around for 30 years, a Hall of Fame coach. I'm sure Tucky Smith, if he hangs around long enough uh, in the college ranks, and I think he probably will, probably will get there too. There's been some tubby NBA talk, hasn't there? Yeah, there has been a little bit. He says he's staying He says he's not going anywhere. I'd like to see, I would love for him to stay in college basketball because I think he's an outstanding coach. Hey, if Roy Williams can stay, anybody can. <laughs> <laughs> and the only thing I thought about is you saying, I'm staying. That's what Roy said when he rejected Carolina to stay at Kansas. Tayshawn Prince, that's two in consecutive threes. He's missed by a wide margin, but Keith Bogan scrambled to pick that ball up. Bogan's kind of maneuvered his way down inside. Nobody blocked him out, and he got a rebound, and now Kentucky's going to sit on it for a little while. 3.20 to go. They lead by eight, so it's a three-possession game. Marvin Stone up high. Now he goes low. Prince flashes for Smith, squaring for three. That's the first one he's missed tonight. And a rebound for Reese Gaines of Louisville. He had a good look, though. Yeah, he did. Whitehead, baseline. Short. Rebound. Miles. Ellis has it. And a chance for three. I don't know how in the world he got that rebound. He was in amongst a lot of blue shirts down there and was still able to come up with a big rebound and stick it back in. That was a big, big basket for Louisville. Watch again. I'll tell you what, that is an outstanding grab right there. You know what's great about that, Larry? He went right back up. He didn't waste any time. He says, I got some heart. We'll see if the freshman can get nine points. Missing the free throw. But it's a 60-54 game, so that was a big basket. Under three minutes remaining. 
Lobo's going to have to turn it up a notch or two. They've got to come out and get some turnovers. And Kentucky's got to do some things offensively as well. Yeah, they just can't sit on the ball right now. Too much time left. Not with two possessions separating these clubs. Smith's wide open. Passed on the three to the corner. Bogans. Way short. Barely got iron. Here's Reese Gaines. He better wait. Three on three. They'll run the secondary break here, and that's a good decision. Works off the pick. Forces it. Draws the foul. Saul Smith says he was pushed into uh, Reese Gaines that time, but you know what? I think it was his old man that was doing the pushing. Watch again. Now, Smith right here on Gaines. He'll make a turn. He goes to the right. Well, he wasn't pushed at all. I think he just kind of maneuvered into him and hit him with the body as he was going up. I think he may have uh, been claiming he was pushed before that all took place. No doubt about the foul call there, and Reese Gaines looks for 20 here. He's been over that mark a couple of times this year. He had 22 against Maryland, and he had 26 against Loyola of Chicago. Gerald Fitch checking back in for the Cats, and that gives Jason Parker a breather. Now, Bob, this is a pretty good coaching move out here by Tubby Smith. He gets Parker out of there, realizing he's got two, what, 210 left. Get a ball handler in there. He's got Fitch back into the lineup. That gives him four guards out there, basically, with friends who can handle the ball. Eric Brown replaces Ellis Miles. So they get Brown, a slasher with long arms, who can play some defense in there. Assuming Gaines will make this. What happened? Wow, a Kentucky foul on the missed free throw. I think, I think Prince stepped into the lane. Yeah, there was an early whistle, you're right. So another chance for Reese Gaines to make this a four-point game. Yeah, Prince was trying to block out on that side over there, and he maneuvered with that left foot and stepped right into the lane. All right. Reese Gaines with 21. This building holds 18,865. Bunch of Larry Conley's friends snuck in tonight. They've got 20,061 watching this game. Look at Bogans. Wow, what a move. Terrific. 16 for him. What a great maneuver inside. Boy, when you look for the guys that got to deliver, and they deliver like that, those are the ones you want to remember. Keith Bogans with a big layup. Yeah, he delivered it on time. 62-56, running down to a minute 45. A catch and a shoot, and Whitehead is rejected by Marvin Stone. It finds Gaines! Put the ball in the better hands. Hey, when you're hot, the ball finds you. And he's got 24. One possession game. And then he fouls. count 18 fouls against Louisville, so that'll send Smith to the line for the bonus. Rico shooting has not been much of a factor tonight. Kentucky 6 of 8, Louisville 4 of 7, and Saul Smith steps to the line. He's a 74% shooter. Take a look again. You're right, Bob. You know, the ball seems to find guys. Stone with a nice block right there, and it goes right between Saul Smith's hands, right into Reese Gaines as if he knows what to do with it when it hits his hands. Way short. Ellis Miles up with it. And Louisville, as we run down toward a minute, could tie this game. Kentucky back into that 2 3 matchup zone. If I'm Louisville, I look for games. They once trailed by 12. A basket from beyond the arc puts them back to ground zero. The clock shows one minute. One minute Shot clock play. at six. Gaines. Can you believe it? He's the guy they had to find, and they found him. He's got 27 with that mate. The blue grass battle tied in the last minute. The question is, do they want a 30 or a 60 here? They're going to take the full timeout, the 60-second timeout, Bob. Tubby calls it with 48.0 seconds to go and a 62-all time. How about Reese Gaines? That's a new career high for him, surpassing the 26 he had against Loyola. Let's go back and take a look at Reese Gaines. Look at this, Saul Smith trying to get around that screen. 
I'll tell you what, there was no hesitation on his part. He got it up and got it in. Hey, I've seen punts during bowl week in the air shorter than this shot was. Look at the hang time on that thing. It's a thing of beauty. It certainly was a beauty for, for the Louisville Cardinals. You are never out of a basketball game as long as the three-point shot is legal, and it's here to stay. A Louisville team that is four and eight. Kentucky, five and five. Tubby's got a 30 left. Denny Crum has a 60 remaining. The possession arrow belongs to the home team. Each team is in the bonus. Reese Gaines, 10 of 14. What a night he has had. He got started early, Larry, and never did cool off. You know what, Bob? And we've seen him bury those last two three-point shots, but he's done it a little bit on the inside, too. I mean, he takes the ball, puts it on the floor, and can go to the basket. In case you're wondering, folks, he is five out of eight against Tubby's defense from three-point range. Here we go. Kentucky's basketball, 48 on the clock. They threw it in with 24 on the shot clock. Smith on the wing for Bogans, who was almost fouled by Maven. There's a good switch. Fitch, looking at Eric Brown. On top, Prince. Whitehead on him, and that's a reach-in. Oh, that's a tough foul. I mean, Louisville battles all the way, and they get it down under five seconds on the shot clock, and Whitehead picks up a foul. No question about it. He pushed Prince as Prince was trying to get the ball. Watch it again. They're in a little trouble right now. Kentucky is trying to find somebody to get open. Once Prince gets it. Yeah, he pushed him a little just as he turned to go up. Tayshawn Prince, 11 points, 8 rebounds, 6 assists. He's a 74% free throw shooter. Strokes at home. Kentucky by one. 26.5 to go. No matter what happens here, Louisville could tie or win with its next possession. Marcus Babin looking over Denny Crum right now, saying, what do you want to do, coach? Score. I'm going to tell you one thing. 22's got it right now, and I'm not sure I want him to give it up. Timeout, Denny Crum using his final timeout. Is he going to take the 60? He's going to take the 60. That's all he had left. Yeah, you're right. That's the only one. And UK leads it 64-62. With 21 seconds later, do I dare say in regulation. Denny Crump in his huddle right now, drawing up the play that he wants. You've got to believe that Maven and Gaines are going to be involved in this in some way. I can't imagine anybody else taking the shot, either, the, either one of those two guys. Larry, don't we see this time after time in rivalry games, though? Savior ranked lower than Cincinnati, they beat them. Missouri, ranked lower than Illinois, they take them to overtime. Louisville, not where anywhere near ranked. Kentucky will be soon, probably, and here we are in the last 22 seconds. These games, there's something different and something special about them. Rex Chapman likes it after his 12-year NBA career. He's retired now, living the good life in Phoenix. Crum, according to our most recent reset, is out of timeouts. Tubby has a 30 remaining. Louisville still has the possession arrow in case somebody would get tied up. I just want to say an indication of looking at Denny Crum's face right here, Joseph Seaman didn't get the message. <laughs> Three-pointers. Louisville tonight, 8 of 18. Here we go. Final 20 seconds. Kentucky by two. And they've got Fitch out there. That's an interesting matchup against Reese Gaines. Eric Brown Preston. almost fell down. Ten seconds. Gaines, high pick. Brown for three. Way off. On the floor. Out of bounds with 2.1 seconds to go. Who does it belong to? Neither referee saw it. They're going to have to ask for some other help. Now they're going to get to the it. A 50-50 ball, and Louisville will keep it. Denny can't call a timeout to draw up a play here. Yeah, they've got to go. They've got to go right now. A catch, a shot. What will it be? A loss, Kentucky. overtime, or a win? I thought Kentucky might zone this out of bounds. They're going man-to-man. -man. Oh, they throw it away. 
no time off the clock. It never was touched. And Kentucky, all they have to do is get the ball in. It goes back to the spot where the throw-in came because nobody touched it. Ellis Biles just launched it over the head of whoever was going out there. Boy, if you're Louisville, that breaks your heart. You don't even get a touch on the ball. Tubby's going to take his last time out. It looks that way. Yes, he has. So back and take a look at the Louisville bench right here. Here comes the pass out. Jenny Crum, dejected. You know, I, I don't think you even, if you're the coach, Larry, you don't even think about your team not touching the ball. You know you're going to get some sort of touch and hopefully a good look. You know, Bob, they didn't have a timeout to set up a play, and they were rushed. I think they thought the team might be in a zone defense coming out of that, for that out-of-bounds play. They went man-to-man -man and just threw it long. I'm sure they were looking for Reese Gaines. Ellis Biles just launched it. Two point one seconds to go. No timeouts remaining. Louisville has a possession arrow. Now it's back to Kentucky now after that call on the baseline. So the Cats, all they've got to do is get somebody to catch the ball and then maybe throw it up into the rafters. Well, as soon as they get it, Louisville's going to foul. There's no question about that. They may foul before the ball even comes in. Prince has it. Whitehead. And the clock goes to zero. It appeared there was a foul before the buzzer sounded, but it is over. The officials have left the floor, and it's 64-62 Kentucky. Hard-fought win for the Wildcats here. The Cardinals never gave up. This is a team that was 4-8 coming into this game. I'm going to tell you what, they battled Kentucky every stretch of the, in every stretch of the way. Coming down toward the end, they were as tough as they could be. 64-62, Kentucky wins it. For Larry Conley and our entire ESPN2 crew, Bob Carpenter from Freedom Hall in Louisville, Bob Stevens, another great rivalry game tonight.